Hello and welcome back to Socially Distant Discover Nature. We're here again in our second episode of November and I thought we'd try something a little bit lighthearted and fun. We're going to look at a year in the life of a hedgehog. We'll start off at the beginning of the year, or certainly the beginning of our calendar year, in January. Now January, February time, hedgehogs are hibernating, and they will have been hibernating throughout winter since about November time. It's possible during milder spells that they might wake up, but generally they'll go back to hibernation as soon as possible. This is an issue that could become bigger in the event of more effects of climate change. Early spring is when the hedgehogs will emerge from hibernation. So we're talking about March time, although obviously all of the months are subject to change and they might be different depending on the severity of the weather that year and where you are in the UK. Thank you very much to Meg from St. Nick's who sent in this spy cam footage of a hedgehog. And the rest of the spy camera footage of hedgehogs throughout this video is also all down to Meg, so big thank you. When the hedgehogs have emerged from hibernation, they could have lost up to a third of their body weight. So they need to replenish those fat reserves. They are hungry and also thirsty. So now is a good time to start putting out food for hedgehogs and water. We've got some videos which will tell you a bit more about that, but if you can get actual hedgehog biscuits, that's great. Just plain old water is good, don't use milk. They're lactose intolerant. On a nightly basis, hedgehogs may be traveling anywhere between one and two kilometers looking for food, and they will nest during the day in kind of temporary lodgings that might, might be there for a few nights on the trot, and then they're off to somewhere else. So they're quite a wide ranging species. As we get further into spring, then love is in the air. So around about April time, this is when the hedgehogs will start to look for nest sites for rearing their young, but also starting the process of courtship and mating. The courtship is quite an involved process and it's quite a noisy one. The male will walk in circles around the female, making a right noise, snorting, puffing, like a miniature little steam train. And you can hear this through closed windows sometimes. Um, yeah, it's quite a spectacle. I should point out that although hedgehogs can breed anywhere between April and September, the ones that breed earlier in this breeding season have more luck raising the young. As the year progresses, there becomes less food available. So hedgehogs breeding later in the year have less chance of rearing their young to adulthood before the harsh winter. Peak mating activity is May and June, which I've also learned recently is called the rut. And when we reach June, this is when the female hedgehogs will give birth to their young, which are known adorably as hoglets. I've seen a few different estimates on the litter size, the number of young that are given birth to, ranging from four to seven, but it does seem that only about two to three of those that are born are successfully weaned off the milk and can become independent. The little hedgehogs are born blind and heard them described as little miniature hot dogs. When they're a few weeks old, they'll be old enough that they can leave the nest with mum, go foraging together, learn the basic hedgehog skills needed to survive. So as we enter August, this is when the hoglets start to become independent and will head off on their own, on their own adventures, starting their own life cycles. Now for the female, the young female hedgehogs, they won't be giving birth or breeding until they reach sexual maturity, which is around two years of age. However, for mature females who've successfully 
reared one litter in this year, they might have a second go. So there might be a, a second courtship, a second mating, potentially a second litter. As I said earlier, because this is towards the end of the year when there's less food available, it's extremely unlikely that any of these young hedgehogs born in September will reach adulthood. This can often be a source of people finding small hedgehogs wandering around in the day in the autumn time. When it gets to October, this is the time when the hedgehogs are again building up those fat reserves, putting on as much weight as possible, ready to survive hibernating over winter. Typically, they'll start end hibernation in November, but some might still be pootling around. So this is a good time to remind people that if you're celebrating bonfire night, try and build your bonfire on the actual day of burning, rather than having it left it there for many weeks and it become a really tempting hibernation spot for hedgehogs. And as November ends, December begins, this is the full on hibernation time for the hedgehogs and the whole process will start again the following year. So there we go, that's it. That's a year in the life of a hedgehog. In this video, I've concentrated purely on the life cycle of the hedgehog, but hedgehogs are endangered, they are suffering, and there are plenty of things that people can do in everyday life to help them out. And there are several Ecosapien videos that deal with those topics separately. So I will put links to them in the video description worth checking them out. And I suppose a final correction, if there is any reference to feeding hedgehogs mealworms in those videos, just ignore it, because we have subsequently learned that that is not a good idea. A lot of the information in this video has been compiled from various websites, including Hedgehog Street, which is definitely worth checking out. Again, I will put the link in the video description. That's all for this week's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.